Hey, it's Mike here, and today this video is gonna be both hot and flashy because we're talking about hot flashes. Yes, we're going back into the realm of female reproductive health or post-reproductive health, whatever you wanna call it, which I'm always happy to talk about because usually male YouTubers, especially younger ones, don't tend to talk about it. There's a ton of great research out there. And in this case, a very new study with some very amazing results. In this case, it's another study from Neil Bernard and his colleagues. So good on the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine for getting more research out like that. Anyway, let's just go. First, I wanna say, obviously most of my viewers aren't going to be directly affected by hot flashes, but I wanna make the argument for why this is relevant to everyone. First of all, you probably know somebody who is affected by these. And second of all, just from a public health perspective, one of the major treatments for this might be hormone replacement therapy. People are taking estrogen. And however, that appears to have several negative effects from increased stroke risk to increased cancer risk. It's technically a carcinogen, so not good stuff. So the point is, if we can find an alternative without side effects or risks like those risks, then that is awesome. Anyway, let's get right to the study, which is a randomized control trial. Pretty much my favorite type of research, which of course means that they didn't just look at the population and say, hey, one group is higher or lower hot flashes. No, they took people, they divvied them up randomly, put them on, in this case, a diet, a vegan diet with a little bit of added soybeans or just a control group, and then they measured from there. That way you can get some inklings of cause and effect. And it really was a little bit of soy. It was half a cup of cooked soy daily. They did it for 12 weeks or three months. And this is into the future of research because they had people on their mobile apps actually documenting how severe or often their hot flashes were. And let's just go straight to those results. For the vegan group, which was technically a low fat vegan group, again, with that soy, so it's not just any vegan eating junk food, but it seems like a pretty manageable diet. They found that the intervention group had a 79% decrease in total hot flashes. Control group was at 49% and moderate to severe hot flashes decreased by 84% in that vegan group and 42% in the control group, so twice as much reduction for the vegan group. And the most impressive difference here is that the majority, about 60% of the women in the vegan group were free, completely free, of moderate to severe hot flashes at the end when there was no change in the control group because there were some improvements in the control group and we'll talk about those later on, but that is incredible. And while it was a smaller study at 19 people in each group, the study design was good enough to get some really good results in terms of statistical probability. And it's cool to read directly from the literature, but let's hear from some of these participants. There's some quotes from PCRM, quote, this was basically a lifesaver for me. I've got my quality of life back. And another said, I'm sleeping better and my hot flashes diminished tremendously. And it has me thinking, you know if there were results like this from some pharmaceutical company, they would be blasting it across the airwaves in a bunch of commercials, but that doesn't really happen with vegan diets, so let's just imagine one for a second. You're getting older, and you're looking good, but are you perhaps too hot? Get cool with the new clinically tested vegan diet plus soybeans. Put those hot flashes on, menopause. Side effects may include other good things like weight loss. Yep, that actually happened in the study. Try vegan diet today. No, I did not narrate the Ford commercials. And yes, they did actually also lose weight in the vegan group, as they pretty much always do in Neil Bernard's intervention studies. Anyway, there were some other results that were notable as well. They did a questionnaire in terms of quality here. Now, and from the before and after, they had improvements in vasomotor symptoms, which includes things like hot flashes and sweating, which is very compelling at P less than 0 0.0001. They also saw improvements in the psychosocial, physical, and sexual domains. And things will get better in the bedroom too. In terms of search engines on the internet, they probably shouldn't have put the word sexual and domains next to each other. Usually that revolves around a different hub, if you know what I mean, but let's keep moving on. Now let's get to the soy point. Why did they decide to add soy to the diet? Well, it all comes down to those phytoestrogens that people are so afraid of, which I've covered before in the past and how they don't actually raise estrogen, et cetera, et cetera. But we're talking about those having a positive effect in this situation. And the mechanism, I wanted to keep this video short, but the mechanism is pretty complex. 
it's all theoretical as well. From this study talking about just the basic mechanism of hot flashes, they say due to lower circulating estrogen in menopause, there can be an increased sensitivity and imbalance between hypothalamic serotonin receptors, which could decrease total serotonin levels. It also increases the activation of adrenoreceptors. We're talking about adrenaline in the hypothalamus, thus causing increased level of catecholamines, which includes adrenaline in the central nervous system. And quote, these factors with external or internal thermostimulus causes sympathetic overactivity, increasing hot flushes, increasing in heart rate. Then when it comes to that phytoestrogen, it can bind into certain estrogen receptors and it has a much weaker effect, but it could still perhaps affect some of the mechanisms we just talked about and perhaps lower hot flashes directly. Paper also mentions that these phytoestrogens have a balancing effect on female hormones, which is really interesting because they're also the same ones that take way too high levels of estrogen that can perhaps fuel breast cancer and balance those out why soy is associated with lower levels of breast cancer but then in this case perhaps get things going in the other direction as well anyway all of that is why the researchers here neil bernard and others looked at the studies on those phytoestrogens figured out how much you would need and it comes out to roughly a half a cup of soy a day which is really not that much but the only issue with this is we don't have a group that didn't eat soy because it could be that there are just other benefits of going on a healthier diet in terms of hot flashes but we can't separate it out so we don't know but this all brings me to that control group. We noticed in one of those instances, the control group saw like basically a 50% improvement, not as good as the vegan group, but why could that have happened? They have some theories. The first one, which I think is funny, is they're saying the control group could have just gotten wind of how much benefit there was happening in the first month or so in the vegan group and then started adopting it to some degree, and that's why they had improvements. Another explanation, which I think is probably a part of it, is as they say, the study finished in December, so it went from a slightly warmer period to a lower temperature period. And yes, studies do show that there can be a pretty significant difference between the hottest point in the year and the coldest point in the year. In fact, a 66% difference between the worst and best times in terms of hot flash severity. But in this case, we're talking about going from like, what is it, September? to December, so it wouldn't be a crazy difference, but yeah, I could see that accounting for like 30% of it. So yeah, that would affect all the results across the board, but the major difference we're not seeing is 60% of people in the vegan group clearing up those moderate severe hot flashes when there was no difference in the control group, so that is notable. All right, in the spirit of keeping this video short, it's pretty much over in a flash. Oh, I, I just can't stop it. Seriously, it's an affliction. Now let's just recap. It appears that this group in a pretty short period of time, just three months, were able to massively reduce ridiculously improve their hot flashes and other menopausal symptoms with positive side effects such as weight loss. So this is pretty incredible. It's not gonna make it into any primetime ads, but it's an important thing to know about. It could help a lot of people. So that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe, share the video to people who might need it. And let me know down below what you think about all of this and the theories of the mechanism and so forth. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Are you too hot? Do you melt cheese when it touches your skin? Try being cool with the vegan diet and soy today. Call 1-800, I'm not a panini.